Yeah, baby, play it, Steve. Steve Cropper in the house. Blues Brothers, Soul Man, you name it. Man, if that doesn't get your toe tapping, you don't have a soul. You don't have a heart. You don't have a soul. <laughs> if you, if you can't, can't if that. that doesn't make you smile, <laughs> if you can't dance, I don't care white, black, Asian, Hispanic, I don't care what race, gender, I don't care what your background, what part of the world you're from. What, if that doesn't get your soul popping, you, feel, your ears aren't turned on. Feel good music is what that's about. And it and it stood the test of time. And again, Steve Cropper in with us uh, talking about his his new uh, album. New, I, I guess we call them album CD. It's just music. You it's, know, I don't know what to call them anymore. I've called them everything they come out with. So dedicated, Steve Cropper. It's a salute to the five uh, Royals. Steve Winwood, Lucinda Williams, BB King, uh, now, Betty Levette. Tell us about Betty Levette. Oh, Betty Levette's been around forever. And the neat thing about Betty. Uh, the reason this came about is because when I do interviews about guitar playing and all that, and they ask who were some of your influences, I always name Loman Pauling, who was the leader and the guitar player, wrote most of the songs of Five Royals. So John Tibbon picked up on that, and he said, you're always talking about this guy, Loman Pauling. How about doing a ded- dedicating an album, doing his songs with the Five Royals? And I said, okay, let's do it. Uh, Betty Levette used to date his brother. And so when she heard about it, Betty Levette's a, famous blues singer out of the R&B singer out of the 60s and uh only problem was she should have been on Stax Records <laughs> but she's just there and she sounds as good as she ever did and she was all over this project and and uh, the song she does Don't Be Ashamed uh it'll blow you away so uh, I might uh, step in here for a second and for those who can make it show up in New York City next to Lincoln Park at Dam Rosh Park uh, I mean, Lincoln Center next to uh, next to there is Damrosh Park, and we're going to do an open air free concert on the 14th of August, and do nothing but these songs. Just play them right there, open air, right, right there in the heart in front of, of New God York and City. everybody. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, that's one. If you can, if you can buy, beg, or steal your be way to New York, show. be there. It's what time? Awesome. Now, what time of the Betty day? Levette will be there uh, sometime in the evening, mid evening, and we also on the show will be the Barkays. Uh, doing their show and the North Mississippi All Stars are opening for us, so it's going to be a lot of fun. That that'll and be. Betty uh, Levette will be there. I don't know who all. Uh, we've got Buddy Miller that's going to try to be there. Ellis Hooks is going to be our main singer on the show and and sing a lot of these songs, and we're going to have some fun with it. You know, I don't care whether you're a, a warrior in in battle, a politician in the midst of great policy moments, a, a businessman on the cutting edge of making the decision that changes changes technology for, for life to come. When you're in the midst of that stuff, you don't realize you're in the midst of history. When you were in the midst of making this music, Stacks Records, all this stuff, Booker T and the MGs, was there any sense that what you were doing was as big as it's been? None whatsoever. We were in the moment, and I think uh, if we knew our craft well enough, we knew that whether this was a hit versus whether the other song we just did was, we could say this one's a hit. In other words, when you say hit, this one will get some airplay. This will get some attention. You knew that with songs like In the Midnight Hour, with songs like Sitting on the Dock of the Bay. As a writer, producer, when we finished those, we said, that's it. That's what we've been looking for. And we kind of knew that. But did we know it would stand the test of time? Absolutely not. Do we know it would get past, you know, top 20 on Billboard? No, we didn't know. Nobody knew those things. Just like the Blues Brothers movie. Who would have thought that movie, as crazy as it is, would just outlast all of them? Yeah, and you look at how much money that movie's made versus what it cost. You're thinking back, thinking, man, I should have taken a piece of the action in that. Forget paying me whatever yeah, my standard rate me, just was. Give me a little piece of the action. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you get together with the folks from that era and talk, I mean, what, what, is, what are the recollections that come back, the memories that come back, and you go, man, uh, we, we were just crazy it's, it's a family reunion anyway, and like any family, family reunion, somebody thinks of something, hey, remember the time when such and such, hey, remember? We do that all the time, and everybody gets a big laugh, and it's amazing. The story Stories on John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd are just, you can't think of all of them. There are thousands of them. And the crazier they are, the truer they the truer are. That's they the are. sad thing. Yeah, with they that, just with did that. some crazy stuff, you know. With the uh, the Soul Man we played coming in, Play It Steve, That that's become your website. You've got a record label. And that was just, he just is in the he moment. He did that. It was the third take of the song, and he just did it. I think behind the second verse and the chorus of the second verse and did it the one time only, and that just happened to be the take. Maybe maybe the first take was a take, and it wouldn't have had it in there, but this time it did, so there we go. And then when the Blues Brothers did it, they, they, they it threw the line again, in yeah. as well. So, <laughs> again, just one of those magic moments that when you're in the moment making, uh, making music, stuff that you don't plan happens. We're so technologically driven in the music now. I mean, you can take, I'm going to take that breath out. I'm going to put that note in. I'm going to take that note from this cut. We're going to yeah. you know, use the computer to put it in. Has that taken away some of the magic in making music? 
No, not for me. Um, me going when I say me going in the studio to record a session is like going to church. It's it's you leave everything outside and you're in there for the moment to do what you came to do, and that's that's the great thing about recording and so forth. And it's it's just a it's just a safe haven to be in, you know. And you there sometimes you're you're in there fifteen sixteen hours nonstop. You don't think about time. You're not looking at your watch and so forth, you know. When you're making records, if you're loving the craft, if, you, if, if you're you loving love what, what you're, you're doing, doing, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of talk these days that you know the, the crossover folks, and you've got Kid Rock that's doing country. You got you know Beyonce wants to go do a ballad with this guy. You got everybody kind of mixing and mashing across the gen the uh, the genre lines. Y'all were doing that back in the day too. I mean, everybody acts like this is something new, but everybody loved the stars in the other genres. And whether it was rock and roll guys wanting to go do gospel, Elvis was transferring back and forth. It's yeah, been the, happening all The arrangement all or the embellishment may be slightly different or a little more modern, but the roots of it are still basic. It all comes from a basic. Because most of the folks in this music business love the music. And if and if you're doing something over here that's I want to go be a part of that. I wanna I wanna go make a record with that guy. I want to go write a song with that guy. That's how it's always been. Yeah. Yeah. I had a friend of mine the other day said I wrote a parody of my own song. I'll let, <laughs> I'll let the fans out there figure it out. He said, You know, Steve, he said I was cool when country wasn't pop. <laughs> And yet you've got all the crossover stuff there you going go. on. You got them all. The other piece of the technology we were talking about uh, a little while ago is is that now with the with the downloads, you know, it's not like you buy a single and it's got front side, back side, and whoever's on the back side gets a free ride. Yeah. Every song has to fight for its space in your iPod. That free Every ride, song has to make it. The free ride put me in business. When I was 16, I had the flip side of a number three record in the nation. And I remember getting my first royalty check, and I said, this is for me. I want to do this the rest of my life. And what was the flip side song? It was called Flea Circus by Bill Justice. Wouldn't have made it on the front side, but man, it made you it made it on the back mailbox side. money, which is, uh, is the big money. Hey, we're going to talk more in a moment. Stick around. This is the Steve Gill Show. Steve Cropper, and this is uh, right around the corner. Delbert McClinton, a Nashville guy. He's been making music in this town for a long time. We'll talk some more in a moment. Stick around. That's where my baby's That's where my baby's Oh!